on guys Johnny Barbosa here with the Octo Chronicles and we are in uh, Chandler Arizona in an awesome place called Terror Trader we just met the owner had a awesome interview with him in here and we're actually in one of the darkest parts of the store one of the uh, rooms that contains many different oddities skulls Ouija boards um, so many different cursed items so we're going to come in real quick and then just kind of get an idea of what the store is all about. And he was able to give us a, a brief story about the history of the Ouija boards, history of the death mask, skulls, uh, many different oddities that are actually cursed. Now this particular room, uh, people have actually come in here to do paranormal investigations and have captured a lot of activity. Uh, to our right, uh, we have an actual funeral home uh, table that was used uh, many, many years ago. And uh, it's actually a, a traveling mortician's table. So tons of people have laid on this uh, particular table when they passed away. Um, there's just tons of oddities. We got uh, different types of skulls that have been carved for different rituals and stuff like that. This place is a one of a kind guys. Uh, we made the trip out from El Paso, met the owner and he gave us a very cool interview and you're, you're about to see that and uh, make sure you check out the channel, subscribe, like and comment. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hey guys, I'm Jason Swore. I'm the co-owner of Terra Trader, and today we're in our oddities room, which is a small room, but a very powerful, compact room uh, of some of my uh, personal collections of oddities. And uh, and I, I want to give you a little tour and kind of give you a, just a quick uh, once around and show you what we kind of got here. Um, I'm very into the macabre, the old, you know, funeral history. Uh, is a big thing for me and so is like mortuary history and all that stuff and i always want to lead off with this uh, early 1900s uh traveling folding mortician's table so before they really had funeral homes and all that they would actually come to your house prepare your body show your body and uh and then they would fold it up and leave after a few days um i found a really used one <laughs> uh, from 19 early 1900s and uh which uh, i don't know how many bodies have been on this thing but uh it was uh, kind of a, believe it or not it's one of my prized prized possessions in here because i just the amount of the history on this thing should be pretty pretty freaky if you ask me so uh, but moving on you have your standard stuff we have human torsos they're usually about you know 200 to 300 years old um which uh, i'm a big fan of getting these and especially ones that are put together well and, and, and preserved decently um and then we run into um, I'm a big carved skull guy. So um, we found this one's out of Belgium. This is a, a probably a 200, 250 year old uh, satanically carved skull. Uh, if you look at the details in there, it's definitely one of those things like keeping glass. There's a lot of, uh, I don't know if there's bad energy in this thing. I don't know what it was used for, but it was, it's a, uh, it's pretty, freaky if you ask me and i figured it needs a home here so uh, getting that getting that through customs was a blast <laughs> interesting um i have our only known cursed object here this is a suicide siren which is um we've done stories on this before but this was found uh basically rolling through people's families since the 1950s uh and there was up to four actual suicides when they when they found the bodies uh of these females this record player was still spending at the same time. And uh, eventually it was given to a Catholic church uh, in the Bronx uh, in the early 70s. And uh, when Bronx burned down, the church it had it was then burned down, this stayed intact, uh, which was oddly weird as well. But uh, sitting in, it, it went to a state storage facility for a while and someone actually bought it. They took the needle out of the tone arm and they've never had a problem since. But it's been deemed cursed. Uh, the Catholic Church is the one nothing to do with it, and uh, I figured I would go away to New Jersey to pick this thing up. It's a very unique piece. It's a very freaky piece. Um, I don't, 
I don't know how much energy is out of this thing anymore. I'm not putting the needle back in the tone arm. I'm not going to attempt fades, but this is the actual original album that was spinning uh, during his suicides as well. So uh, yeah, it's a, definitely a <laughs> a prized possession of mine. I love it because I'm my only, my only cursed object at, as much as I know. So um, we have some other odds and ends, you know, um, spent, I just got a new murder bottle. And if you know the history of the murder bottles, um, they were used, uh, kind of Victorian era time frame that mothers would put their breast milk in those things and um, the kids would suck out of those things, but you can't clean them. So they would develop extreme bacteria and they were killing kids left and right. So these are, uh, that's what I call them, the murder bottles and whatnot. So some pretty freaky stuff on those things. Um, and then once again, we have a mixture of oddies from Sideshow Gavs to actually real skull, a guy with has giantism here and eagle syndrome where his jaw was away. And uh, it's a couple hundred year old skull, but it's actually a one and a half times larger than any other skull we, we own here. And uh, we, moving on to actually our oldest piece right here. This is actually from the year six, uh, 681. So this is 1400 plus years old. Uh, very old, but you can see, I mean, kind of the durability of, of the human bones and how they actually last. I mean, that one's probably been cracked and moved around and all that stuff, but that's actually for something that's 1400 years old. I would say probably one of the oldest relics probably in Arizona itself, if you ask wow. me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, moving on a little of this cabinet, and so this is a little mixture of uh, all types of stuff. We have another car skull from Denmark as well. It's a pretty cool little piece, a couple hundred year old skull, but real goat horns have been, an artist has actually worked itself in here. Um, going to this guy, this guy is over a thousand years old. He died in uh, 1015 uh, in, in Belgium. Actually shot with an arrow through the head. Not that arrow, obviously, but uh, just kind of as a, a show what it was. But uh, so a traumatic death on that one. Here's a Haitian voodoo skull um, picked up in a Haitian market in England. Uh, and I was the guy who, who sold me this skull didn't want it anymore. He's like, I. He goes, I don't want to have bad, I don't want to give you, a, I'm not selling you something that's going to curse you or bad energy, but this thing, I've had nothing but bad luck since I've had it, so I got rid of it. I've kept it in here. I've put some, uh, you know, if you believe in the, in the voodoo and the Haitian, you know, uh, you know, lore behind the voodoo and all that stuff, uh, my chicken feet behind it, the claw away to bad, the evil forces. Mm -hmm. I've had no issues with this. Some people have. Uh, some people have had uh, some serious drama with this thing. I personally have not, but I'm not very sensitive as most people are, you know, so... Um, anyway, so moving on, we have, uh, I love this. this is one of the only uh, working electric shock therapy machines that come out of Willard Asylum out of New York. Um, it was, uh, it still works. And this was used actually in the asylum. I kind of put it on one of my dark ride props here that I got from the uh, Wildwood Boardwalk in New Jersey. Uh, as just to show what it looked like for someone to put that on the temples and then, you know, uh, crank the, the knobs and get fried. <laughs> so um, one thing here that a lot of people don't see, that these are, I've had mediums talk about these are voodoo altar jars from the 1920s used like in a traveling uh, voodoo tent type of, you know, practitioner type of thing. And um, I've had mediums come in here and they are saying, hey, you got a lot of dead things. You got, he goes, imagine all the dead stuff in here and like dogs are just kind of roaming around. Now, what happens if you put a bowl of raw meat? They're going to be a frenzy. He goes, this, this is your raw meat right here, these voodoo ultra jars. So they use, they would put blood in these things. They would put, you know, rum in these things. They do all types of stuff. I'm, I'm still studying. They made a terracotta, but they're from the 1920s. So pretty crazy stuff. So, you know, more stuff in here. We have a real monkey's paw. We have uh, a child skull from the 1700s out of Ireland there. You can kind of even see the, the adult teeth coming in from the, uh, over top of the uh, the child, the kid, the kid's teeth and all that stuff. Um, a Kapala skull here, which is pretty quiet, pretty, pretty crazy. I've always wanted one of those, you know, for a monkey skull and whatnot. This guy right here was, um, he, he died and, uh, and drowned and he was, I think over 600 years ago. So you can see the salt water ero eroding his, his skull and whatnot, but it still shows the durability of uh, the human bones and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. uh, the Ouija board we have down in the bottom here, this was a, it's a 1920s Ouija board. Um, and the reason it's in this is because it was the history behind it. It was used and it caused, I, I, once again, this is, I'm getting a story from the a family that, that it passed along and it would had some, uh, some incredible <laughs> drama attached to this thing. I don't know what was happening, but they broke it. They broke it in a hundred pieces or a bunch of pieces. And he said it got worse and worse. So we bought it, we framed it, and I'm keeping it in here. <laughs> nice uh, away. 
when we have investigations here, this is a hot spot. And I don't know why, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm an amateur at best when it comes to this thing, but this 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 talking board here is, uh, it supposedly has some energy attached to it. Yeah, yeah so for sure. Uh, moving on, we got obviously some more, uh, you know, human um, uh, torsos. These are sideshow props from uh, England uh, in the 80s. Pretty cool stuff. I'm a big sideshow guy, and I think every audience room should have a little bit of sideshow stuff. You know, and a lot of people think this is actually this is actually a sideshow prop as well. This is not a real Nazi, but this is <laughs> once again back in the '80s in, in England. You know, you come see the dead Nazi in a ten to one show or something like that. This is something that the, the guy that I met um, was the carney who actually built these, um, and then when he retired, he took them all with him, and now he's starting to slowly sell them off, and I like to buy them. So. Um, uh, moving on here to another cabinet of ours, which is full with little odds and a couple more. I actually had a few more of these uh, Voodoo Ultra jars in here, the, the terracotta ones and whatnot. Uh, real used, uh, you know, casket plaques for you know funerals and all that stuff. So a lot of crazy fun stuff in here uh, to check out. Uh, you know, some medical oddities, some actual, you know, uh, exorcism masks and all that crazy stuff we have here. And then, like I said, moving on to our, our talking board wall, our Ouija wall. These are all, I think the latest I have is probably late 1940s, all the way down to uh, 1905 is like our, our earliest one, you know. And um, all plucked out of basements, attics all over the country, some overseas as well, and all that stuff. I don't mess with Ouija boards. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tempt fate <laughs> on that, you know, but um, these are definitely, some of them get really freaky. You look at the back, there's a lot of scrolling, there's a lot of, chicken scratch I call it you know there's people in there that actually write stuff on the backs and I just leave them be and I put them on the wall but a lot of energy comes off this wall when we have investigations and all that stuff and uh, that kind of takes us to our witch's tower which we did a, a little video on this on our YouTube channel the territory YouTube channel but um, very interesting story I can make it real brief for you I thought it was just a cool tower I thought it was a neat tower matte black crystal up there don't know much about it I found it online I bought it from a lady out in Naples Florida Okay, had this in here. I would come in, I don't know, after a month, month and a half, I'd always find this dial turned to the two o'clock. I mean, there was nothing besides a just a metal rod that goes back here, and that's it in the back. I'd find it to the two o'clock, I'd turn it back. A day or two later, I'd come back, it's moved. Okay, customers are doing it, no big deal, right? I'm always trying to find a scientific explanation of things. One day we had really bad electrical problems. We were flickering in here, all this type of stuff, and it was a Sunday night, we were closed on Monday. I'm like, oh cool, I'll call an electrician. I come in here, this thing was turned, I turn it back, I shut the whole place down. The next morning, I'm the only person to come in here, I bring an electrician, he's working on the, the little circuit board over here. I look, it's at the two o'clock position again. So at that point, I freaked out, all right? So I contacted the lady, it took me two weeks, she finally got back to me, and she goes, I'm in, she's in Naval, Florida, we're in Arizona, and she goes, okay, I'm a white witch, I created this thing to ward off bad energy, so on and so forth, right? She goes, but I was in a really bad, abusive relationship for 20 years, 25 years, to a point where I had a middle night, grab my kid and flee to Florida. I'm like, well, that sucks, I'm sorry to hear that. And she goes, the place I fled, and if I ever had to go back, I would want to kill myself, is Chandler, Arizona. The exact same spot where this came back. Now, I don't know this lady, I had no, and in tens of thousands of, of cities in this country, it came back to here. At the time, it was winter time, which we were two hours, um, I guess, behind Florida. Could explain the two o'clock position, and it's also pointed to this way, which is east which is where Florida is at, located geographically. So, a lot of weird stuff on this one. I immediately took the price tag off that. We'll never sell this. this is, uh, we're constantly investigating this thing as well. So, um, these are just a few of the things you'll find here in the audience room. But, uh, you know, once again, it, it rotates a lot. It changes a lot. There's, a, once again, there's always new stuff coming in and stuff going out as well. So, it's kind of hard to pinpoint where, where any paranormal activity is coming out of and all that stuff. But uh, we have fun doing investigations here and I encourage anybody to come down and, and do a, an investigation and help me find out what is going on in this thing. But then, so there's a little overview of our audience room. Awesome, man.